Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to talk about GitHub Actions and ways to automate them. Now, how many of you use GitHub Actions today? How many of you use them for just CI CD? Good, you can put those hands down in a minute because we're going to do something really cool. So to get started today, I want to talk about how we use Actions beyond CI CD. So I'm going to start introducing how we go more than CI CD, then how do we go faster? How do we accelerate our delivery by automating things? Because the best way to do things is to automate our way into a job. But then we want to do that securely. So to get started, I want to talk about more than CI CD, but before I go to slides, I think we're all here for some demos. Can we agree to that? So this is my repository. Um, I'm going to encourage everyone, as this is a public repository, to go to this and join as a contributor as I'm talking to, to you all right now. Why are we going to do that? Because I want you all to see what automation I have as a news contributor when you join a repository. Now, how many of you, when you get started on a project, don't know where to start? There's maybe no readme, don't know where to go. Another really good use case is maybe you're joining an open source project. A lot of people go, I want to contribute, I want to do cool things, but I'm really scared because putting yourself out there is hard. So in this repository, I have a workflow that's going to run as you all join as contributors. I have quite a few workflows, but the first one I want to show you is called community management. This is one that I've built where it goes anytime um, it's created on a new pull request or a new issue or someone coming in. It's welcoming you as a new contributor to my environment. So not only is it going to welcome you, it's going to check, are you a first time contributor? Are you opening that pull request? Are you opening an issue? So if you're there on your mobile device right now on the GitHub app, open an issue. Let's see what happens, okay? So with this issue, it runs a little script that adds a person, it welcomes a new issue contributor, and it welcomes a new PR contributor. So no matter how you're contributing to this repository, we welcome you in. But it doesn't just stop there. We can also auto tag our issues and pull requests because as I open up that pull request or that issue, I want to look at ways that uh, I can tag it for organization because issues can get really messy and our repositories can get really messy. We can add priority and different components to it. The other thing we can do is look at metrics. Now, why would I want to look at metrics? Because I want to look at issues and pull requests in the, in the last 30 days. Because sometimes when we're contributing to projects, whether it's open source or in our enterprises, we open that issue or we open that pull request, but it goes stale. So this actions workflow is going to look at that and generate a report. Now, this is all text, but look at, let's look at how it actually looks in real life. So if I go back to my actions, and this is my, I'm just gonna go to the prettier screen here. Go to my community, and I see someone's already ran, a, ran an issue here. Let's see what we've done. All right, we already have a contributor. So thank you to the person that's already live contributed for us. Thank you for being on top of your game. So we've welcomed this new contributor. It's auto-tagged some issues and PRs in it. And it's ran successfully. And we've got a couple more coming in. So I love this. I love that people are contributing. Now, so those of you that are out there doing this, do you see the welcome messages? Do you see what's happening when this is running? So I want to see what you all have done. I see new issues being open. And let's see what's happened. So the one that's been universe with an exclamation, not assigned to anyone, it's been open. I don't see any labels. Maybe because there isn't a description. So we can't always fix everything, but we have good ways that we can look at this. So we've welcomed everyone into the repository today. We've done some cool stuff. Now this is a public repository. If you want to take these workflows with you after today, please do. This is for you. But the other thing I want to look at is stale management. We often forget about doing things. I was working on a community project recently, um, and actually it's a, a Microsoft open source project, and I completely forgot about it. So maybe every day at midnight, I want to run this schedule to see what stale issues do I have. So in this case, I'm taking a different approach, and I'm managing stale issues and pull requests within that repository. So I can ma mark those as stale. I can do 90 days for PR, excuse me, 30 days for PRs, and seven days before they're closed again. So again, this has all this, and then we also put some management metrics in here. So if I go back to the workflows that have been running, what does this look like? I'm gonna to go to our stale issue management, click on one that's already ran today, and it's gonna give me a report. So not only did I have some ability to look at stale issues and clean it out, but I know exactly how this clean out report is. How many of you have used any kind of uh, build summaries in the past? A few of you? So in each of these actions workflows that we see today, there's going to be a build summary. And we can customize those build summaries. So very much in this one, I want some metrics. So it's not only just that we've 
done some things, but how do we know it's been done? So this is a, a management report from earlier today. There's obviously not going to be any stale PRs just yet or any issues, but we can use this in other ways. And I'll show it to you how I use it in my other um, actions workflows as well. And another cool thing you can do with this actions workflow, you can get this report, you can send it to yourself. Whether that's going to be in Teams or Slack, you can automate getting a report every day or quite regularly as well. So the next thing I want to talk about, that's stale issue management. I'm going to, I don't want to jump ahead here. Um, I want to go ahead and look at, ah, we are in the right place. So we've welcomed you into a repository. We've done some build reports, but I want to talk about some enterprise use cases. Now, I want to talk about scaling our actions. How many of you have used repetitive actions a lot? Or maybe you have a lot of actions and it's quite busy in your environments. So in this case, we're going to take a reusable CI CD pipeline, but we're calling our other workflows. We're using reusable workflows. How many of you have used those before? Quite a few. Great. This is a great way to organize when you have a lot going on. So we can see here in this job that's ran, I have the back end that's ran, and I have a front end job. I'm just keeping it really simple. Um, you can have more jobs running if you need to and more workflows. So when I go to the workflow file of the we're going to go to the front end build. I've triggered these automatically, but we go ahead, check out a repository, do a front end build, run everything through, and then output it. Now, in this front end build that I've ran earlier, I am again using our friend, the build summary. So this I ran a little bit earlier just for the sake of time, and I have a build summary of how I went. Now, this is a really simple build, but I can customize that build summary that build summary. I can know exactly what completed successfully, how long it took. It took about two seconds. Now, I did really short builds because I was thinking maybe we'll run these today, maybe we won't. But if they get really long, these builds, and I'm going to go to the back end build because our back end is actually a little bit beefier in this project from one I ran earlier. And I can pull up the metrics down here. I can see that this one ran for 23 seconds where the other one ran for a couple seconds. So 23 seconds is quite minimal. The reality is our backend builds are probably going to take anywhere from 15 minutes, an hour, maybe six hours. So to make these builds go faster, we can look at caching our builds as well. So while we're using those reusable workflows or those long running workflows, we can cache them. Bring the cache in, use some of the pre-builds, maybe using some kind of um, Python versioning or NPM packages, et cetera. You can cache those in so the builds take a lot less time. So if you do have running workflows that are quite long and pretty heavy, look at caching and how you can minimize that as well. So also on this uh, reusable CI CD pipeline did, notice here that the back end build and the front end are running in parallel. So this is another good trick. We can cache our workflows when they're needed, when we have big packages, but then also running them in parallel saves a lot of time. Sometimes we want to look at different steps or we want to gate something. In this case, I'm running them in parallel so that they run at the same time using different runners, consuming a bit more of my actions workflows minutes, but it means that they run consistently. Now, this could be something where you could run a lot of your testing at the same time as one of your other workflows. You could be doing other tasks, maybe documentation. Hint, documentation with actions is a really, way to go for, a really good way to go forward. Um, so not only am I taking a back-end build, excuse me, the full build summary, but I also generate readmes and do lots of other things with this. So I've given a very simple output of what's happening. I can look at the tests that have ran. I can customize this. And I like using pretty pictures because sometimes always the green check marks and the red Xs aren't my favorite. So I want to go ahead. I'm going to go back into slides for just a moment, so bear with me. So I said we were a little bit more of just more than just CI CD. So what are some other use cases? Um, maybe resizing images, looking at the UI of our interfaces. Um, again, these are all things that we could do with, uh, with actions that's just more than just CI CD. For me, documentation's a big one as well. So I did mention creating readmes before. And I did say we're gonna go faster. So again, those are your parallel jobs, caching your dependencies, and then using reusable jobs, especially if you're going environment to environment. So a really another, another great example of reusable jobs is if you're in quite a big repo with a lot of tasks going on, instead of carving it out into multiple repos. We see a lot of it, especially in mono repositories, um, or even just legacy code bases. But more importantly, I want to talk about doing it securely. Now, do I have any security experts in the room? A couple of you. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. 
we're all security experts because we're pushing code. And I've done it, I've pushed a password. We don't wanna do that. So we spent a lot of time at GitHub securing our full SDLCs and our, our workflows by doing quite a few different things. But we need to prove that it happened. We need to prove that it happened correctly. And we need to prove that it happened correctly and the process and the people who were involved in it were supposed to make it happen in the first place. How many of you have had a build that's been tampered with? It's happened. Um, and, and unfortunately, it's quite a bad interaction when that happens and our jobs are on the line. So I want to talk about artifact attestations when we can attest a build. Now there's lots of big words when you talk about artifact attestations, but we want to provide evidence that the artifact that is being ran is the same thing that we originally built because getting things tampered with isn't very good. So we spent a lot of time and effort in artifact attestations. Um, we've also done a lot in controlling our releases as well at GitHub. We've had immutable releases that went GA very, very recently. Um, I believe it was announced yesterday uh, on day one. So in that, we're trying to get that whole SDLC lifecycle that um, a lot of our customers are requesting. So we do have Salsa level three compliance with this, but with this, uh, whether using a public repository or private repository, they do work a little bit different. So with using the GitHub managed workflow, and this is GitHub managed, not on a uh, self-hosted runner, uh, if you're in a public repository, you're attested with the public good SIG store. And from there, it will then go into the um, attestation, signed attestation, and gives you a public transparency log. This is great for open source projects. The open source community has been screaming for this, and here at GitHub, we've been making sure that it got delivered. Now, if you're running in a private repository, which a lot of our customers are, you attest with a GitHub SIG store, you get your signed attestation, and then you get your output into a private attestation store. So being able to show a bill of materials and provenance is absolutely critical. So I, good news, have a workflow that I've already ran today, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, look at what it does. So this is gonna build a container image for us, and I'll pull up the repository. This is a really simple workflow, because as we know with attestations, they can get really long and quite heavy handed. So in here, I'm gonna, it's very simple, I'm gonna to push to our GitHub uh, registry, I'm gonna package up our, um, our build, it's gonna to go to the GitHub container registry, I'm gonna go ahead and build and push that image, and then I'm going to attest it. And I'm doing that with several actions built into this workflow. And then I'm also gonna give myself an output summary. So what does this look like when it actually runs? So again, I just did a very, very simple build, and then I give an output summary, because again, I like using these build summaries. So as soon as I go down, I can see the build summary, I can see exactly the container image and the image digest, and then I can double down on the attestation created. I can download this attestation, uh, I can secure it, I can look at when it was created, I can look at the commit history, I can compare the SHA codes, I can look at the build summary, I can look at the actual workflow file that it originated from. All of this data is going to be packaged up and something that you can verify within yourselves. Now, you can also verify it in the CLI, and you can get all these details in the package that is, um, that is downloaded. So, on top of that, you can also compare your attestations to your releases in your build. So, I'm going to go ahead into our repository. Um, I created a release the other day, and I can see the, this is my latest release. I can go ahead and look at the source code. I can look at the attestation tied to it. So the attestations and the immutable releases are now a very happy married couple, giving you an either further step to secure those workflows. So if you're out there and you're thinking you're not a security expert, what are ways that you can help yourself be more secure? And the end-to-end -end SDLC capability with attestations and immutable releases is really cool. Um, and it's something that our enterprise customers have been really excited about and really wanting to hear for quite some time. So I'm gonna go back and look at our workflow runs from earlier, let's say, let's go to our issues and see how many more issues we have going on. All right, we've got a new contributor message. We, oh, well, I fixed a spelling typo. That's because I didn't review my own code. Fantastic, thank you. So now we have a description in this issue and we can see the GitHub Actions bot has come in and said, welcome to the project. It's tagged your name. It feels happy and welcoming because they said my name. It says we'll review your issue. We have a contributing guide and that's the output that your, that your contributors get. You welcome them into the community and you can add a lot more to that. I wanna thank everyone today for coming in and contributing to the code base. Again, this is a public repository for you to take with you. Um, please feel free to look at any of these actions workflows, open up issues, comment, break my code, whatever you wanna do. But I thank you all for attending. Uh, my name is April. 
I'll be uh, here in GitHub Central if you have any questions about this. And thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your universe. Thank <laughs> you.